Azura says, I have a flow with multiple layer approvals uh, triggered by when a new response is submitted. The form has 80 questions. What is the best option for the approver to view the response answers from the form? It's quite messy if I drag all the dynamic contents from the form into the email content. Is it possible to the approver to view the form response in, in the same as a respondent copy? So many good answers for this. No. The fact that the form has what, 80 questions? Like we're talking serious. And it's probably gonna have to be a custom or bespoke type solution that will allow you to do it. But that sounds bigger than it is, right? It it could be as simple as putting that midstream responses out to a central location for viewing. What are you thinking, Sharon? Uh, that's exactly what I, <laughs> I was being sarcastic. Like I got 80 questions. Yeah. So um, wow. I actually had to deal with this um, this last summer. We did a, a, a conference I, or I helped somebody with a conference and they basically did the same thing at the, you know, they had like all these bazillions questions. I, I want to say they had like 75 questions in the form. And so ultimately what we ended up doing was we ended up building a Power Automate workflow that basically grabbed the information out of the form and put it into a spreadsheet. Um, and that's, I mean, nine times out of 10, that's the best way you're going to have. You could put it in a SharePoint list if you really wanted to be a really wide SharePoint list um, with a lot of views, but um, spreadsheets, I mean, good old, good old handy spreadsheets. Yeah, I think by default, the, the forms data, the responses will end up in a, in a spreadsheet. The thing that you'll have to ask yourself is, is it okay for others to see those entries? Mm. So it is a complicated thing. It's all you have the you have the the tools and there's the options within the tool set to to customize a solution, but it is it's a solution build. I think in the like the approvals app inside of Microsoft Teams, you get to see the status of where it is and the that multi approval mm -hmm. flow, but this is a separate thing because you're you're totally bespoke with what you're describing. I mean, if you did it, I guess one of the options is, yeah, I was gonna say outside of a custom solution, because a custom solution is you could basically build a, a view for them to look at that would take that information and basically flip it around for them to look through it. But mm -hmm. yeah. With InfoPath, right? Yeah, yeah, InfoPath. Hmm. It depends what you wanna do. <laughs> yeah it depends yep yeah i mean if if you're i was thinking about this of uh, yeah this is another classic question where follow-up questions would be fantastic for azura Indeed. to figure out what they really want to to go and do like is it my first thought was that um, for each response, being able to look at all the the answers to that the other you know, person. If I'm driving, there's multiple people driving to the forum. You know, there's some trigger that you know comes back to me as the person that originated that request to that person, just so I can verify the results of that. Um, then I want to see, or I want to see a, an aggregate of all of the people that I've driven, or do I want to see all the people that I've driven to the forum across all answers to the forum that. You know, so there's three different ways of looking at that data right there. But yeah, there's depending on what they're BI, trying to do. Power BI solution could be really good too. Like if you grabbed the information, dumped it mm -hmm. into a data source like Dataverse or something, and then pulled it back into a Power BI um, report, then they would have. I mean, it would obviously this is like as solutional as it comes, right, Norm? But <laughs> but then they could have kind of an interactive drill down, you know, viewable option to see it in a, a very pretty way. Indeed. One thing, like my first reaction is like 80 questions is a lot, especially if it's multi-layered uh, approvals. And I might be dividing that work into logical chunks. So get to the first approval and we'll call it phase one. And then if they get through that stage, then they come into phase two and phase three and so on to make the, the complexity lower, to see the stages and the responses out at those different uh, parts of the, the end gate if you will, before it gets into the next phase. And then you can get the analytics. You have something that's a little more supportable. You won't run into that 30 day timeout that we have to unfortunately live with Power Automate on an approval. So after 30 days, it just times out and you lose it. So that's always a danger. And if you have something with 80 questions, there's a good chance that that's gonna take a long time to run through. 
More, more importantly, what are the analytics on abandonment for the form and the workflow, like you mentioned? Yeah. <laughs> 30 yeah. days. I, you know, workflow being intended to replace long running processes. It seems like 30 days is a really arbitrary, maybe low end kind of yeah. timeline to pick. But yep. I guess in terms of systems and storage, you could end up, if you don't set something, it's going to blow out your storage and process tracking. So I don't know. Yeah. On, on paper, 30 days sounds great. Just tack in a few long weekends or a vacation or some of the companies we work with. Yeah. That'll chew up 30 days pretty quick. I was thinking mm -hmm. of all the automated email reminders for each step phase of where it yeah. pauses, <laughs> you know, after however many, how much time that they've not moved it forward to that next step. Your yeah. mandatory training is 78 days overdue. <laughs> <laughs>